Hello and welcome friends. In lecture 1 related with use of prismatic compass or in general compass, we got introduced with angle bearing meridians and such aspects. So already you have a feel now that how the magnetic bearing as well as true bearing is useful in land surveys. In the continuation, now we will discuss the use of compass or magnetic bearing measurement in land surveys. This particular presentation is mainly focused on use of prismatic compass, its construction, graduation patterns as well as certain distinguishing features of surveys compass. As you learn the content, I expect you to explain the construction of the prismatic compass to set, observe and record magnetic bearing by using prismatic compass. Explain distinguishing features of prismatic compass and surveys compass. In general, in surveying operations, we make use of prismatic compass, surveys compass, trip compass, as well as tubular compass. Mostly, this particular equipment is preferred for traversing operations. Compass measures bearings of various survey lines, making use of magnetic needles. As discussed previously in the lecture 1, as you have the bearings, you can make use of basic geometry and the relationship between the pole bearing and back bearing to determine the improved angles. Further, these particular angles will be useful for plotting the travels as well as the features. This particular equipment is patented in 1812. The credit mainly goes to two scientists. One is Charles Schemmel Calder and Henry Catter. The prismatic compass is serving equipment extensively used to measure whole circle bearing of the bearing in the traversing operations. Here, the name prismatic is given because essentially it consists of a prism which is used for taking bearings. The picture depicts the equipment which is available in the market now, it comprises mainly a magnetic needle attached to the circular ring and the assembly as such is centered in non-magnetic box. There are many features related with the construction which we will discuss with the help of this particular slide. Let's start from the bottom. The bottommost portion indicates the threading arrangement to screw the compass over the tripod. This is p -hold on which assembly of magnetic needle, graduated ring and adjet cap is resting free. 
In this particular right way sketch, the photograph shows the position of the pivot on which this particular graduated aluminum disc and adjet cap assembly is resting freely. The assemblage is further covered by the glass cover so that it won't be disturbed easily. Now, in this particular sketch, what you see is aluminum disc as well as the magnetic needle. Both material are soft one and the pivot is very sharp one. So, during the usage, this particular pivot may penetrate the needle as well as this particular aluminum disc. To avoid this particular penetration and hence to facilitate this particular free rotation, the assemblage is provided with this adjet cap. As well, whenever this particular equipment is not in use. It is provided with some kind of lever arrangement. So that here what you see is lifting pin. So this particular lifting pin will be if pressed down, it will activate this particular lever and the whole assembly of this needle as well as adjet cap and aluminum ring will be lifted up against the glass cover. Thereby, the contact in between the pivot and this particular assembly will be broken. Now, as this particular assembly is freely resting, it will keep on oscillating as we start operations with the equipment. To dampen that particular oscillations, here, there is a provision of brake pin and spring brake. On the left side, what you see is object fan. This object fan is provided with vertical hair, which basically serves as reference to bisect the object. It is provided through some hinge-like provision so that Whenever we are not using this particular equipment, the object vein can be folded on the glass cover so that the way I mentioned earlier, this lifting pin will be automatically pressed down and the assembly will be lifted up. The folding arrangement is shown in the actual photograph. On the right side, what you see is nothing but the eye frame, eye hole. The triangular portion that you see is nothing but the prism and lower portion what you see is nothing but some cover which protects the prism. Essentially, eye hole and the vertical hair provided in this particular object when provides the line of sight which is shown in the red color here. Now as you see this particular line of sight will be flowing in the horizontal direction through the range of this particular vertical window of the object when you may sight certain objects which are placed above that particular line of sight or which are placed below that particular horizontal line of sight I mean to say. But it has got limited range. If you want to see certain object which is placed on the ground or in the high altitude, it is not possible to catch it through the limited opening of object when. Hence, it is provided with this particular reflecting mirror. So the way you see here is nothing but the reflecting mirror. In this particular sketch, what you see is 
the reflecting mirror pointing in the downward direction so that we can see the object placed on the ground. It can be simply detached and it can be placed in the upside down so that we will be able to get the image of the object which is placed in high altitude. In this particular sketch, what you see is the actual arrangement of prism as well as the cover which is used in order to protect that particular prism. One more feature that you see in this particular right foot sketch. This is the eye hole through which you take the reading placed or provided on that particular aluminum disc with the line of sight getting reflected through 90 degrees through the slanted edge placed at 45 degrees. Here, simultaneously, the observer is expected to see bisect the object through this particular slit which serves as eye vein. As the object is bisected, he will look through this particular eye hole in order to see the graduations and take the reading of back. But in order to have that particular image of the graduations distinctly seen, we can make use of this focusing study. Here it can be moved in the upward direction or it can be moved in the downward direction so that here the prism will be properly focused in order to give the clear image of the graduation that we wish to read. As we sight the object and as we could be working in during the hot days, the object that we wish to sight may be very bright. So sighting the object through nude eye may be cumbersome. So in order to avoid that, we are provided with these sunglasses which can be interposed through this particular line of sight so that the image will be clearly seen. Now, the graduation part. This is the assemblage that you saw earlier. Just to repeat, magnetic needle, aluminum disc, a jet cap. Here what you see is the graduations that are provided in the clockwise direction with the range 0 to 360 degrees. Just below this particular arm of this particular aluminum disc, there is a provision of this magnetic needle. Here this broad category of the needle needs to be placed in the horizontal plane for that it is provided with this rider which can be slided on this particular arm. More about this in next presentations. This is what actually you see the graduations which are firstly inverted in manner. Secondly, here there is a provision of 1 degree divided into 2 divisions. As such, you will be able to take the reading with 13 degree discount. One more thing, here as you see, you are expected to take the reading at the opposite end of the object that you see. Hence, Whenever you are sighting towards the magnetic north, the reading you must get on the opposite side as 0 degrees. Hence, here the way you see north end of the magnetic needle and hence the graduation on this particular aluminum disc is 180 degrees 
where as south end is marked as 0 degrees. Now, as we wish to take the bearing, the prismatic compass can be easily held even on our palm of the heart. But in order to take the accurate readings, it is better to take this kind of tripod. Usually, it is wooden tripod provided with some sharp shoes so that here we can keep it on the station with its center exactly above. Now, this particular prismatic compass will be set on this particular head of that particular tripod. Actually, there is an assemblage of some kind of the joint which is spindle provided with ball and socket joint. So here what you see is nothing but the ball and this is the actual socket. If we take the cross section, it would be somewhat like this. This is socket. This is the vertical uh, arm provided with this ball like arrangement. It facilitates the rotation of this particular uh, compass and the total assembly about the vertical axis through some limited range so that we will be able to bring the surface of this particular glass cover in the horizontal plane. So, as we set the equipment exactly over the station, as we level the equipment in specific manner, we will be able to take the reading through the prism after citing the object under consideration. So, conventionally, we follow three temporary adjustments. First one is centering, which is nothing but the set, so placing the equipment the way I discussed. The second one is leveling the equipment. We, by making use of this particular ball and socket arrangement, we ensure that the glass cover is in the horizontal plane. And third thing, we make use of that stud, the focusing stud, in order to focus the prism, in order to see the images, the images of the graduations very clearly. Now, after setting the equipment, after carrying out all that particular temporary adjustment, the way we discussed, the next task is to observe the bearing of line. Here, the way we discussed previously, this is actually I V, whereas this is the portion of I hole the way I mentioned earlier. So both you can see here, this is the I hole. This is nothing but say I V. So as you sight through this particular eye plane through the object when vertical hair, you will be able to see the particular object of your interest. Now the next thing you wish to do is to take the reading. So for that, what you have to do is you have to look through this particular eye hole or say eye piece. So as you look through this particular eyepiece, you will be able to see the graduated disc. So this particular graduated disc, the way we mentioned earlier, it is provided with this particular say inverted graduations. As you look through the prism, you get the erect image. So firstly, you have to take the reading with degrees and then you have to take the reading of the next division which exactly coincides with the vertical line passing through object under consideration. So, 
Here in this case again, the process that we discussed about the citing and citing this third disk, as you look through that protocol IPs, you will be able to see the vertical hair of that object vein directly. Whereas, you will be able to get the image of that particular disk seen through that particular prism. So, here the way you see, this is 100 degree, this has to be 101 degree. Accordingly, this the next division will represent 102 degrees. As we discussed previously, each degree is further divided in two parts. Hence, the reading must be 102 degrees 30 minutes. Let me remind you that these particular graduations were inverted and hence are seen in erect manner with this particular increasing order. As we take the reading, we can record this particular reading in the form of lying, forebearing and backbearing. The concept of forebearing, backbearing already we have discussed. So here as we stand on this particular station A with respect to magnetic meridian in the direction of the survey bearing will be read as 142 degrees 30 minutes. Hence, it is entered as forebearing. Whereas, as we move ahead, as we go to station B, as we look back to station A and take the reading, so the reading read will be nothing but back bearing. The other category is surveillance compass. Earlier, according to old literature, it is also named as circumferenter. Essentially, it is nothing but the surveillance compass which is used to record the bearings. Here, as you see in this particular sketch, the graduations are provided in quadrantal form. Hence, you can measure the quadrantal bearings directly. It consists of certain circular brass box containing H type of magnetic needle which rotates freely over the graduated circle divided into the 360 degrees. As you see here, there is an I vein object vein, whereas the needle assembly is simply resting on the p-hole. There is an absence of aluminum disc. This aluminum graduated scale, as it is called or shown as scale ring here, it is attached to the circular box which rotates freely about the vertical axis. One is expected to take the reading directly through this particular glass cover. Hence, the readings are provided in erect manner. As such, there is absence of there is absence of any prism and the assembly of the prism in order to cite these particular readings. See here, as we consider this particular prismatic compass, the aluminum disc is provided. With 0 to 360 degrees graduations as far as prismatic compass is concerned. The heaching or that particular graduations are in inverted manner so that they are read in upright or erect manner, which is seen through the refracting prism. Each degree in the graduation is divided into half to give the least count of 30 minutes as far as prismatic compass is concerned. Whereas in surveillance compass, as I mentioned earlier, we are not using nowadays. Here, this particular surveillance compass is uh, mostly obsolete. It gives the quadrantal bearings. The graduations are erect and are to be taken directly. This aluminum disc is attached to the circular box. It is provided with this particular age bar type of the needles. Graduations are 0 degrees, 90 degrees. So, 0 will be dealing with north and south, whereas 
90 degrees we will be dealing with is tire rest. One more noticeable feature here is is tire rest are interchanged from their natural positions. Let's try to understand how we take the bearing by making use of sideways compass. In this category, in this type of compass, magnetic needle will always be remaining stationary here. The graduated disc and the sighting vents will be rotating along with the box. So, this line of sight is fixed in line with 0, 0 graduations. Thus, the north end mark on the disc is always on the line of sight near object when, whereas south mark is always near the eye field. When the line of sight is pointing towards north, needle points to zero on the, the needle on the disc at that particular north as we rotate this particular telescope, sorry, as we rotate this particular box, the line of sight and also the disc attached to it turns in the clockwise direction. Here, as you see in this particular sketch, as the box is rotated to 30 degrees on the right side by taking the reference of this particular north mark you can record the bearing as north 30 degree east now as we say rotate the telescope i mean to say rotate this particular aluminum disc towards the right through further 30 degrees the bearing will be north 60 degree east. Say we have rotated this particular box and hence the line of sight through 90 degrees. As such, now the line of sight will be pointing the east direction. But here if this particular graduations marked as west and east in the interchanged form, it will be giving the right position of the east. Had it been marked as west, there could have been wrong interpretation of the west direction and reading could have been read as north 90 degree west that is due west. So that's why the position of east and west are interchanged. Further, the rider's position, see, this is the edge bar type of the needle, the way we discussed earlier, whereas in the prismatic compass, it is broad needle. So this particular edge kind of the thing, we want to recognize its north direction, its north end, I mean. So, it can be identified by making use of rider's position. For this category, for this particular sketch, as you see, the rider is provided on the south end. That's why here on the opposite direction, this arrow mark should be north direction. It is quite common that depending on the manufacturer's specification, this position of the rider and that purpose a north mark and that thing will be changing. But essentially, what are the principle and constructional aspect that we discussed here are applicable. There could be three distinguished sources as far as compass survey is concerned or use of compass is concerned. First can be considered as local attraction. So this local attraction prevents the magnetic needle pointing to magnetic north because of the influence of the uh, magnetic field the material has. 
So it could be magnetic ore or it could be underground iron pipes. There could be high voltage transmission lines, electrical poles. So this influence is local one. It changes from site to site. Even the kind of accessories we may be using, say for example, chain, tape, peg, arrow, bridging rod, axe, knife, and some similar things, that could also be having the magnetic nature. It may influence the working of the optical magnetic needle. But as we can remove that, it cannot be treated as local attraction. In the coming presentation, we will be discussing more about simply local attraction. Hey means just this is small introduction for this particular topic. We are expected, we are expected to carry out setting of the equipment, centering of the equipment, as well as leveling of the equipment and focusing of eyepiece. So, someone may commit some mistakes, errors are bound to be there, hence it can be treated as one more additional source. As well as because of certain instrumental personal limitations, the readings could be read inaccurately as well as data could be entered in wrong manner, hey means there could be these particular third category. In earlier presentations, already we have discussed enough about the theory of errors, probability in the measurements and how we can minimize the probable errors. So friends, thank you for your attention. I hope the concepts that we discussed will assist you to explore the use of compass in general in survey operations. In the next presentation, we will discuss de detection of the local attraction and applying the correction to this particular local attraction in order to determine the correct bearings and also to determine the corrected include angles. More about these in coming presentation. So, why till then? I wish you very happy learning. Thank you. Thank you very much.